end of the classroom, you see your two rivals, Aishley and Van Van, doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you must know it's really bad. Like, counterfeiting recipe books, experimenting with restricted ingredients, bad. Summoning a demon, bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. Not sure you're ready to handle this. <sighs> Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Wow, that's actually a real- I- wow. Tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them. But really try to get a closer look. Meh. You sit near the rivals but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. <clears throat> it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us. Who want to learn? Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? Ugh. I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ain't you. Being the best in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. It doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what they were hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book. Just like the one you found after you encountered the spork monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Aisha immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. The book is a family heirloom, and it contains our secrets. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they've tossed potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Oh, Pop. We're playing. He... Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of one more student. It's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty feet. <gasps> hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. Oh, don't be mean to Clank. Look at him, you're making him cry. He's gonna rust. You watch how to talk to him. He didn't do anything to you. That's right, Husky, you stand up for him. Bzz, womp. Who do you think you're talking to? Never heard such language, not even from a from a stand mixer? Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van to make him fly across the room. <gasps> Protect- Bro, she crazy looking, but I kinda dig it. Say, say it. She, she crazy looking, but I kind of dig it. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazy men. Are <laughs> These crazy men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over for me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Aisha's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least, or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got a lofty career aspirations to f aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town. My tiny legs are very, very tired. Oh. But I'm here now. And hope you are ready to learn. You try to give some Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Sorry, sorry. Got a little worked up of people trying to pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let there be a lesson. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, 
we review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. <clears throat> Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who signed their name first. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders. You miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Big Husky. Naturally, this appears to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water? A shimmering pepper? A dog biscuit? Pepper. Brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. My friend, ooh. <laughs> this guy again. I'm here to give you an important message. Ooh. You must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> To fulfill <coughs> the prophecy, <coughs> <coughs> you must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and it's gone forever. You think to yourself, Jeez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. <laughs> <laughs>